So I'm going to place my hands on my heart and take that breath of love and gratitude. So grateful for this time to come together to be the two or more who are gathered in the name and the nature of love. Grateful for our willingness to have open hearts and open minds for our declaration of healing, shining away any and all blocks to love, knowing that they are dissolved and resolved back to the root source from which they came in all directions of time and space. We're grateful to have this beautiful, healing, compassionate, loving community to share our understanding and our experiencing and our living of the teachings of A Course in Miracles. We're grateful to have all of our earthly and heavenly helpers that are surrounding and supporting us now, supporting the technology that we get to use to come together each week, blessing and guiding all those who are here now, anyone who may listen later. We're grateful that we get to share the blessings and the love that we are and our expanding awareness with everyone because we are one with them. In grace and gratitude, we let it be. And so it is. Amen. All right. So we're in chapter 22, um, section one, the message of the holy relationship. And um, I was going to start at the beginning, but when I got to the end, I'm like, no, I think I need to go there. So I'm going to start with the last paragraph. Um, which is paragraph 11. Um, and it reminded me of the, the um, photo that I used to post <laughs> our call in, in my Facebook today, which was, um, let me just pull it up real quick. So it's a picture of two sunflowers and it says, Sunflowers follow the sun, which we all know that. But did you know, when it's cloudy and gray, they face each other and share their energy. Imagine if we did this too. And I don't know that we have to imagine it because I think we already do. That's why our brothers and sisters are our salvation. And so um, that image came to mind when I read this and that's why I posted it with our um, with my Facebook posting this morning. Christ comes to what is like himself. The same, not different. For he is always drawn unto himself. What is as like him as a holy relationship. And what draws you together draws him to you. Here are his sweetness and his gentle innocence protected from attack and here can he return in confidence for faith in one another is always faith in him you are indeed correct in looking on each other as his chosen home for here you will with him and with his father this is your father's will for you and yours with his and who is drawn to Christ is drawn to God as surely as both are drawn to every holy relationship. The home prepared for them as earth is turned into heaven. So I, in reading that, um, and like I said, that meme popped into my head, that picture with the sunflowers. And what... The other thing that popped into my head is my true desire to be able to see, feel, and know Christ in everyone that I come in contact with and in myself. And sometimes it's easier to see it in others <laughs> than in myself, but I'm really working toward having that experience of looking on myself and looking on everyone that I come in contact with and um, seeing that Christ energy. So that's where I would like to start us with today. Who else would like to share what they got from our reading this week? Go ahead, Linda. Thank you, Bruce. 
So I won't go to the first paragraph. I thought that was pretty fabulous. Let's let reason take another step. If you attack whom God will heal and hate, the one he loves, then you and your creator have a different will. Yet if you are his will, what you must then believe is that you are not yourself. You can indeed believe this, and you do. And you have faith in this and see much evidence on his behalf. Where, you wonder, does your strange uneasiness, your sense of being disconnected, and your haunting fear of lack of meaning in yourself arise? It is as though you wander in without a plan of any kind except to wander off, for only that seems to be. You know, this just so describes uh, you know, the, the existential angst that as a human being, and I don't know any human being that escapes that, feels like longing, longing. And that's why I love the course, because it really kind of explains everything. Like, I know what that is. I know where that comes from. So I, I know what to do about it. I, you know, it's just, I don't suffer with that anymore. I just don't. My, my life is so densely rich, moment by moment, with this practice as a student. Um, I like this uh, paragraph two, sentence seven. The brain cannot interpret what your vision is seeing. This you would understand. The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. But what it says you cannot understand, yet you have listened to it and long and hard tried to understand its messages. You know, this constant need of doing, and if I just figure it out, figure it out you know, on that treadmill that we, you know, that's what we call life, basically, <laughs> you know. And uh, over in paragraph five, I liked sentence five, or no, six. What needs interpretation must be alien, nor will it ever be made understandable by an interpreter who you cannot understand. Because the ego doesn't have my answers. It is by, you know, everything but my answers, in fact. So, thanks. That's it. Thank you, Linda. Go ahead, Saskia. Can you unmute yourself? I muted you because we were getting some feedback. I can't. I can't find the references. I'm sorry. I must be on the wrong paragraph or some the wrong section. Um, We're in uh, chapter 22, which is salvation and yeah, the holy yeah. relationship. Yeah, yeah. And section one, which is the message of the holy relationship. Oh, I thought we were in section two. That would explain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. That's all right. No worries. Well, I went and had a good read of section two. All right, great. <laughs> next time. <laughs> Sorry. You'll be all prepared for next week. <laughs> Who else would like to share? Go ahead, Hamir. Thank you, Linda. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, this... Um, this idea of alien, alien um, interpretation is alien to me. And that if I am in my truth, if I'm the way I was created, I will understand. And somewhere in the course, I remember it said something like understanding and peace come together. But <clears throat> whenever I try to figure out, which is what Linda was talking about, and which is what my mind does, it's like... You know, and it's anything. It's just okay. What happened? I want to. I want to really. I want to analyze it. I want to figure it out. And that is not my true original state. And that will not bring me understanding in the way what understanding really means, which is what I'm really trying to go for with analysis, which is only 
paralysis. It's not peaceful. So I, you know, paragraph five says your sight was given you along with everything that you can understand, not the sight with the body's eyes, but the sight, the vision of Christ. You will perceive no difficulty understanding what this vision tells you because you don't have you don't need an interpreter. It will be directly understood by me. For everyone sees only what he thinks he is. So if I continue to think that I am weak, that I'm small, that I'm vulnerable, that I can be attacked, I'm not gonna see with vision. The only way I can see with the Christ vision is to own my inheritance, which is that I am a child of God, and that vision can be directly given to me, should I choose that? And it says, and what your sight would show you, you will understand because it is the truth. Only your vision can convey to you what you can see. And it reaches you directly without a need to be interpreted to you. And, you know, I can feel when I ask the Holy Spirit or higher Holy Self in me to stand back and see through that, I have a different experience. I really do. Um, in my thoughts, you know, if I'm thinking about someone, if I'm thinking about my ex or anybody else or an in, in, in experience directly with them, because that's the truth of who I am. And you know, Linda, I just wanted to share this too. I remember when you and I first met, you said um, something to the effect of, I promise you this is the beginning of something really great for you. And I don't want to jinx myself, but I'm starting to get glimmers. It's so like one of, you know, how we're doing the aspirations, intentions, goals. Um, I said, you know, when we were doing the intention, I said, I want my grievances to be transformed into gifts of love. And, and that felt so right for me. Like it, and I don't know, I just feel like I'm starting to see that this is a gift. Um, this is a gift to find myself. And, um, and it's through the vision of the Christ consciousness. It's not through Homera analyzing, oh yeah, this is, and that's the way I would read the course too before, right? It would like try to understand it with the mind and I, you have to, I have to put the mind away and let it be shown to me. That's all I have. Thank you for letting me share. That's so exciting, Homera. That's <laughs> so exciting. And um, yeah. I feel like that's how I came to uh, the course when I first started reading it too. It was like from an intellectual standpoint and I couldn't understand it. It just seemed like I was reading a different language. Um, but when I really, I mean, I still believe that this text is written in my heart. And when I'm willing to you know, put away the analytical mind, the in, in intellectual mind that wants to try and figure things out and, um, and understand things. That's when it started to, it was, it's like little explosions in my heart space <laughs> that start opening up um, the vision of what is the true reality in, in my life, in my world, and that I can really, you know, I'm not just saying that everything works for my good. I'm really seeing it and feeling it and believing it on so many levels um, that it really does just feel like, you know, little tiny, like fireworks. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. Feels like fireworks going off. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I'm so grateful that you're seeing it for yourself because I, I knew it was there. Um, Deborah, I did want to let you know that I muted you, sweetie, because we were getting some feedback. I was trying to figure out where it was coming from. So you can star nine to unmute. Um, and I'm happy to, to do that for you. If you okay, can. I did, Linda. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Honey. Who else would like to stare? Go ahead, Carla. 
Yeah, I think that's perfect. What you've been talking about is it, what what it feels like, and I'll get to the the course thing. Is it? It's identification. And I was given those two words. The two words. All, I mean, I think you can live off of these two words: identification and motivation. So. Whichever one you identify, whoever, if you identify as the true self with the God, with whatever love, with whatever it is, then you that indicates <clears throat> the motivation you respond to everything with. The, the place you identify with drives the motivation of your response. And so it goes to the first paragraph, line three. Yet, if you are his will, what you must then believe is that you are not yourself. And that's what you're talking about is letting go of the thinking that, and I think that's in the layer paragraph two, I sometimes take just a piece of a sentence that it seems like it drops some meaning, but it adds some meaning to me. In the second paragraph, the, the second line, just the last four words, you would think is you. That's, they really, they really go hand in hand. Is it, we think we are something. We think we're, you know, we like strawberry better than chocolate or something. And those are all Not that they're bad, you can eat chocolate if you prefer, but ways of identifying the separation, really. I I like chocolate, maybe, you know, you do what you get what, you know, when you go to the store, store or whatever, but not that you all have to eat chocolate, but thinking that I am something different than you and that we're not, we seem to have different personalities. We came here with, we chose to come here to remember something. It's, and that's what learning really is, is remembering. And this, this section, the first <laughs> two, two pages, I highlighted it. A ton. The last two pages I didn't highlight very much, but um, it just was so chock full of like um, five, line two, the second half again, where everyone sees only what he thinks he is. I mean, that's they all it's kind of align together that you see what you believe, you know. And then in the, in the, Gina Don Aker, she's like, she has this try, this circle is like, you, what you think, you see. What you see, you, ex what you, yeah, you see, you experience. What you experience, you think. And it, it's a, it goes around and around and around. And so that, what it feels to me, and let's see, I think I, <clears throat> no, uh, But my sense is, what is ego? Ego is, in a sense, a tool for us to for us those for us to utilize in this form life, right? To help us to know to stop at a red light, or sometimes when you're driving home and you you're thinking about something else and you, you're like, oh, I'm home. And you're like, how did I get home? Ego got you home. It's actually helpful, but it's been altered by our belief. I don't understand. I, so it's a whole big now right there. But um, so Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is let go of everything you think you know. 
everything you think you need and allow correction to come. Like in the, in the way of mastery it says, it will come. And that's why I hear from you, Humera, you're letting go of you trying to fix it, right? Of you and allowing correction to come. It will come. Regardless of how you experience it, it will come. I see it in everybody here. We were all in their own manner, whatever, our own personal path or whatever, curriculum, whatever you call it. We're all allowing correction to come. And And it will come. God, God, I think that's another line here. God doesn't leave you in this world in the illusion without a line back to the truth. So it's happening. Girls, and, it, and I, I'm just going to plug in, Linda. Okay, thank you. I saw them mention that this is the third time the way of mastery was mentioned it in like, I don't, I didn't read, I didn't, I don't remember exactly what it said, but I have a way of mastery group on Thursday at 3.30 Pacific, so that's 6.30, it's about an hour and a half. But so what I'm saying, is, so if you have any questions, so my email is intent to share at gmail.com and just message me in all one word, intent to share at gmail.com. And it's free, you know, and you and no commitment. And um, there's some really um, determined people there. So join us. Thank you. Linda. Carla, it was me. Thank you so much. I actually had never heard of the Way of Mastery until yesterday, and this is the third time I've heard of it since yesterday. So I was like, whoa, something is just waving flags in my face here. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, and I was already putting that in our chat <laughs> when Carla started talking about it. So yeah, one mind, one mind. Linda, can I just say something really quickly to Carla? Uh, Carla, I really love um, what you said about the ego, uh, the way you you framed it, because I think like for me, um, reading the course or even before the course, you know, somehow like ego has become this vicious, like horrible, evil thing. And I think uh, the the name of the game for me is to bring together, not separate. I'm already fragmented enough. So I need to like, you know, bring myself together. And I, I just, that felt so good. And then I connected it to what Linda said earlier about the sunflowers, like when the sun is gone and how we turn towards each other. And I was thinking, you know, I have not done this on my own. Every single one of you ladies has helped me, whether you've said something to me directly or not. And even like last week, you know, I met with Leslie and, you know, I was a mess <laughs> the way I saw myself, I was, but I wasn't a mess because exactly what needed to happen. She just held space and I cried. And then I swear to God, because she held space the next day, I was like, like the sun, I was like beaming for everybody. Like just, so I just want to say like, this is, I'm not doing this by myself and I'm ever so grateful to every single one of you. Um, for the love, energy, and, and the thing, the work that you're all doing, because it's it's helping. It really, I, I'm here, an example of that. Thank you so much. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, go ahead, Linda, and then Nancy Gale. Any comments? Um, so paragraph six. Thinking this kind of loops together with some other comments, dovetails into some comments uh, that have been made. But, and I just, 
it lets me know how patient Jesus or the Holy Spirit is, knows exactly where we're at. Um, I hearken back to probably the first couple of years of uh, walking this walk or trying to anyway. I didn't understand anything. Like a simple paragraph long lesson. I would read it and go, what? What did that just say? I don't know. But some, I already know. But I already know. So staying with it, it just kind of begins to reveal itself. All that drops away somewhere along the way. So of all the messages, paragraph six, you have received and failed to understand, this course alone is open to your understanding and can be understood. This is your language. You do not understand it yet, only because your whole communication is like a baby's. The sounds a baby makes and what he hears are highly unreliable, meaning different things to him at different times. Neither the sounds he hears nor sights he sees are stable yet. But what he hears and does not understand will be his native tongue through which he will communicate with those around him and they with him. And the strange and shifting ones he sees about him will become to him his comforters and he will recognize his home and see them there with him. So, you know, this process, you know, here we are in whatever chapter and it just, it takes time. But the good news is, I don't have to believe in it. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to, you know, because I really already know. I'm just undoing the barriers to that wisdom. So that's all. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Linda. Nancy Gale. Oh, two things. <clears throat> Carla, the, um, the link, the link. Holy Spirit's the link. I, I I can't find it where it is exactly. Maybe it's in the um, manual for teachers, but the Holy Spirit, God, it says, Jesus says here that the, when we left heaven, we're from, we decided to, to leave God and come on, go our own way in separate way into this world here. Um, God gave us the Holy Spirit as our link back to him. So that we, you know, we could always get back to him. That was the link. That's the link. Um, and the second thing I wanted to say is yes, last night in the grief support group, um, um, Connie was sharing, and I, <laughs> she was just she lit up like um, the sunflowers that you were talking about. It's like it's like by the top, you know, she was just like glowing, and the light was shining through her, and that's like. I went to bed last night and I said, oh, that's what I wanted to say. You know, it was like, she just was this light, just that's all, you know, shiny. And it was just to love. It was like, oh my gosh, look at that, what happened to her. And she's just like, Ooh, like radiating like the sun, you know, the rays. It's like, whoa. Anyway, that was just awesome. And uh, I'm done. <laughs> I'm trying to cons condense my communication <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great. my goal for the year <laughs> and and thank you for that uh description of connie i'm sure she'll be happy to hear it and meet with her on friday morning so yeah who would have thought that such a bright light could come from someone um losing someone losing her son so tragically two years ago and now she's just she is that beacon she's that uh, lighthouse for others to work through their grief and come to that space where they can also find joy back in their life again. Yeah. Glad you got to experience that. Who else would like to share? Go ahead, Carol. Um, thank you, everybody, for your shares. As I've been listening, it came to me kind of like, almost like a summary. What's going on is we're coming out of the world. It is that experience of transition. 
So, because yes, I was the same way. When I first started reading the course, it was like, I'm reading another language. Why? Because the world is intellect. The world is do it all on your own. The world is really God's nice and he's up there somewhere, but that's not a part of my life. And so that change of awarenesses is what's happening. We're shifting from our heads to our hearts. So when we read with the understanding of our heart or even just the intention of our heart, no longer our intellect, then God speaks to us so clearly and it's just love, love, love. When it began to happen for me, I cried through every single page I read. I could not get over the level of love that is in this text. It was overwhelming almost to me. I just cried all the time. And, and yet I couldn't put it down. It was too, you know, I was like, holy cow, I can't cry all day long. But I didn't want to put the text down because once we get it, Homer is in that process. It's just this draws you because it's Jesus calling us. That's what it is. Jesus is speaking to us and saying, come with me. Here's where you're going to find everything. And so we're coming out of the world more and more and more. We don't fit the way we used to fit. I know I don't. I look at it and it's just different. I don't see it the same way. I don't want it the same way. I don't need it the same way. I want what we have here. We have heaven together right here. We have everything we'd ever need. And because we're one, it's in each of us. And so the only changes and differences are the uniqueness of our personalities, which has been given to us and our gifts are different. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But I picture it like a cell in a body. The cell is a part of an organ that functions. We each have our own job as our little cells or selves or whatever you want to call that. We have our jobs to do. We're not the same in that sense. But however, we are the same. We are the same in reality. There's truly no difference. There's no barriers. There's no parameters. We are one. There, there's nothing that separates us. And so the only seeming separation is the different ways we function in the organ of the body of God. And so if maybe that's a picture that might help, I'm very visual. I need to see visuals. And so this is what I'm hearing. We're coming out of the world more and more and more. This is our home. The invisible is more comfortable to me today than the visible. I don't desire the visible the way I used to. And I used to not understand. But I'm here and I see all this. How could this not be real? But it isn't. Because the the invisible is more real to me today than it's ever, ever, ever been. And I, I just, m my life just is so, so blessed. And I just see it. I, I, and I wanted to share it with, and Suzanne, I wanted to just tell you, we'd love to have you in our two Thursday night group, Reading the Way of Mastery. It's phenomenally wonderful. It's a wonderful companion to the course. It truly, truly is. How to put that you. plug in, sorry. <laughs> sounds like a good plug. <laughs> it, it's a lovely group. We laugh a lot. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for what you've just said, Carol. That's that brought tears to my eyes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we become a, a sponge that is so saturated with the ways the world has taught us that then we have that because I had that too, that sense of like, I cry at everything. Everything makes me cry. And, um, but again, that crying, I get this image of like a sponge. So we're letting go of the false vision 
And it's allowing us to become like a sponge, like a baby that they take in everything those first few years of their life. And they're so hungry for it, you know, so hungry to learn the language and how to move in the world and how to um, react with uh, the people around them and how to um, express what they desire. And yeah, we're baby sponges. <laughs> Thanks for that, Carol. Isn't a sponge a living thing from the about the, from the ocean? It sure so, is. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I just wanted to, well, I don't know that, Carol, you're really hard to follow, but anyway, that was so beautiful, um, but you kept, you said the word same, and I'm, you know, I get onto a word, and um, uh, in paragraph 11, uh, here it is again, Christ comes to what is like himself, the same, not different. And I feel like we're all together on this journey where we are deciding and desiring to see the sameness now. And as we, we see all of our different, what seems different, well, the illusion really looks different to me. I can see Lynn, that's Linda and her personality. And yet we're being called to go within and start walking in that invisible realm, there is a sentence that says, there are two realms, be sure of it. One, well, that might be my words, but there are, there are two realms, I remember that. One is spiritual and one is invisible. And I think we're all so aware of the invisible and that is our desire and really desiring that sameness that brings us to oneness. And for me, it is practicing the quiet space that no matter what the chaos is, that I'm, I'm, I'm living from that. And, and I can feel some differences. And I also will quote, uh, this is a Quaker, a uh, quote from uh, George Fox, where he says, and go walk cheerfully over the earth. But he says, walk cheerfully over the earth. And as we bring this heaven and breathe it in, we can do that, even though it sounds impossible. Uh, so we walk cheerfully over the earth, answering that of God, Christ, spirit within the other so we're i see us all just going along together desiring to live from that quiet space and i'll, I'll tell you i was it was it in this reading that the word uneasiness came up that word uneasiness kind of suited what hangs around uh, and, you know, if I'm in the world, there's reason to be uneasy. So um, experiencing that uneasiness and then getting to that quiet, sacred place to see the sameness. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Robin. Would anyone else like to share? Go ahead, Leslie, and then Franca. Hi, everybody. I missed you guys last week. It's good to be here. I just wanted to uh, share a little moment that I had um, so last weekend or the weekend before where I felt like I really am getting that I desire peace more than anything else. It was definitely a God moment, Robin. <laughs> okay, so I'm scrapbooking with a bunch of ladies and we each have our own room because of COVID. And 
so I woke up Saturday morning and I, I went to brush my teeth with my towel and I went back to my room and the door is locked <laughs> and everything's inside my room except me. And I, I was just like, huh, wonder how this is going to work out. You know, it was just, it was just instead of getting all upset, I was really more open and curious and excited to see how God was gonna work this out. So I go over to my scrapbooking buddy and I say, I've got a little problem. And she goes, oh, what's that, honey? And I said, I'm locked out of my room. She's like, you lock your door at night? <laughs> and I did a little survey, nobody locks their door at night. I don't know why I did. But um, I think it was when I used to always be in hotels, I just automatically locked my door. Anyway, so she goes with me to the little employee room and we're searching through the basket and we find a key. So we're like, oh, a key, great. So we, we try the key, it doesn't work. It's like five to eight and I know I have excellent timing. And I just said, she said, well, the guy's coming to bring breakfast. Maybe he'll have a key or something. I'm like, okay, I'm asking the angels for help, you know, but again, I'm not getting upset. It was just, to me, that was a miracle because there was a time where I would have been upset and I just wasn't upset. So the guy comes and, you know, he's got his mask on, he's six feet away and everything. And I'm like, I have a little problem. So he listens to me. He's like, don't worry. I know where he is. So he goes into the employee room and he reaches above the door where there's a big stick with a key on it. So he goes to my room and he's like, oh, your lock's different than everybody else's lock. And everybody that I've told that story to, they're all like, oh, it figures or Murphy's law. Or, and I was just like, huh? And he's like, well, I'm going to have to go get the credit card. And I'm like, yeah, let's see if in a past life, you're a really good thief or something, you know, and he just looked at me like I lost it, you know? So he just goes and he gets the credit card and he opens it up willy nilly. And I get in and easy breezy, no big deal. It was just, it's just effortless. I love living effortlessly, not having any problems, allowing the day to unfold the way it should. How do I know I should have locked myself out of the door? I locked myself out of the door. So it was just, it was just really neat that I was able to maintain my peace through that experience without getting upset and without getting that chaotic energy, you know? So it was, it was a neat moment. That's it. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> Love your God moments. Franca. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you. And Leslie, thank you for your stories. I always remember your stories. <laughs> so thank you very much. I just wanted to follow up with what Homira and Robin were saying. Um, this past year, I feel that I've been lifted and shifted. All right. And I know it's not just from Jennifer. I know it's from everybody in the community. And I'm so, so grateful. So today I was reading um, the lesson, the workbook lesson for today, and I listened to Lisa Natoli's commentary, <clears throat> and it was so beautiful. I meant to look this up, but I, I, I didn't have time. And she just said, for every five minutes you spend practicing, and so practicing to me now is even resting in quiet, and connecting with the divine, connecting with truth, with love. A thousand minds wake up and a thousand ears are saved because remember, there's only one mind. So I just wanted to, uh, to say that in light of, what, of everyone else's shares and how I really, really feel the connection and feel the power behind it. So thank you. We are sunflowers turning to each other <laughs> to gather more sunlight and then spreading that sunlight out into the world. I don't know if any of you has ever um, seen in person a field of sunflowers, yeah. but it is one of the most glorious things to look at. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it just, you know. You, you can't be sad looking at a whole field of sunflowers. So I feel like that's, you know, that's what we're doing here, that we come together so that we can restore ourselves, refuel ourselves, you know, lighten our hearts so that we can go out in the world and, 
and uh, share that light with others. Yeah, so thank you. Nancy Gale, go ahead. We have, um, I'll, I'll, in the country, I live like in a sub suburb, just right outside the city. But um, out in the country is um, this farm, acres and acres, it's just sunflowers. And people come from all over, you know, the line there's to the road to the, um, and take pictures. It's just oh, awesome. Um, oh, I wanted to ask, I don't do Facebook stuff. So can you put that in the chat, the WhatsApp chat? Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Would anyone else like to share? Read or what has been shared here already? I think the theme, this whole, this chapter, right? Um, this whole. What I took from it is just the the um, we live in the world we live separation is what the world is, and this is showing us that that's not um, the real world is just one. It's just the, the contrast. It's just showing us what separation is and what, it's just showing us what separation is and, and that that's not reality. That's what I got from this whole thing. It's like, okay, okay. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks Nancy Gill. Yeah, it's about the contrast. That's how we learn, right? My Kathleen is showing us the sun. Kathleen, <laughs> so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I love sunflowers. Lovely, Kathleen. Thank you. They're just little short ones. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're just part of the uh, sunflower seed, the, the seeds that I throw out for the birds. They oh just, my gosh. The sunflowers just turn into sunflower. <laughs> Seeds. Duh. Perfect. Yep, we have that within us, right? Yes. Go ahead, Carla. Okay. So, in paragraph four, where should I start? Line four, maybe. Reason would tell you that this is no secret that need be hidden as sin. And I think it's just the secrets. But I must but it is must but a mistake indeed. Let not your fear of sin protect it from correction. For the attraction of guilt is only fear. Here is the one emotion that you made, whatever it may seem to be. So there is only love, but we sometimes at some point, I don't know what exactly ego was, but I think it was there to actually let us know that we're leaving love somehow. And then we started <laughs> believing the fear was real instead of saying oh it's just a sign to go back to the love oh thank you we started going oh i don't like you we started making it making something so i digress so i read many things but somehow i'm able to put it together and then like the fifth paragraph in the Violet Flame book by Patricia Co. Robles, you said original intention of our embodiment and the schoolroom of birth was for us, and this is a big thing, to learn to use our thoughts and feelings to co-create patterns of perfection from the causal body of God and his physical plan of birth. So what does that mean? To love, to only extend love. 
from God. That's what we're intended to do. So, but we're all learning to somehow to use our thoughts and feelings. So, because we've made ego something, I think that it wasn't supposed to be. But, so, thoughts only come from two. Ego isn't a source, it's not even real, but. We think it is, so we give it our sense of reality because we are real. That our thoughts only come from God or ego. And that goes back to you think you think. This is in a personal life I took that you think you think. God is the original thinker. So everything comes from love or fear, like Jesus says in the Course. So, and it says that, that this is one motion that we think we made, whatever may seem to be, but I'm recognizing how to discern between thoughts where I align with God, align with God's will and my true will, really. And something else like this book calls it something else sometimes we call it fear and whatever and this also there in that story that you told leslie that yeah you saw oh i could choose that but i'm willing to stay in peace i'm willing that's where i'm interested in living and bringing to all my experiences that experiences are just experiences until we name them something. And you named it, oh, let's see, without naming it. You, you like, you get, oh, let's see what God's going to make this into. So I hear people sometimes say that, oh, my judgments, no. They're not you. They are not you because you can only be an extension of God, can only be love. They're just something that's offered to us by ego, by the false self, by something we made into something, something. You can choose. We have free will. We have the freedom. It doesn't seem like it sometimes because we feel it. It's so, ego speaks loudest and strongest. But it's there. The truth is there. Look for the truth and it will find you. So that's it. Thanks. I just want to follow up, you know, Carla, that's so true. I didn't realize it till you just said that, but I didn't label it as good or bad. It just kind of was the whole I am that I am. I mean, it just was, it was living in the present moment. And the thing I was really proud of was that I wasn't, I didn't get mad at myself. And in the past, I would have gotten mad at myself. How could you, how could you lock yourself out of the room? You know, I blah, 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 blah. And that, that just, I just didn't go there. So that's, it's neat when you can see growth like that, when you know you would have reacted different. And again, I responded and didn't react. And that has been when I, in 2014, when Carla and Linda, when I started Massful Living, you know, it's like, that was, was my intention was to respond instead of react. So six years later, seven, however many years it's been, and Robin too, how could I forget Robin? You joined us too. You were in that same class. So very, it's, it, it's getting more fun. It's getting more fun. Yep. Yep, it just reminds me again, and I've had this opportunity to share the same story a couple of times this week already. Um, another spiritual teacher that I follow occasionally is Matt Kahn. And he talks about how when we're, um, when we go to the end of this physical life and we're um, 
at the point where we're reviewing our life, that we're going to be like little kids in a movie theater, like on the edge of our seats, of our hands on the railings, like, you know, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And we're going to have this remote control in our hand. And we're going to come to this point where we're going to see our life as a flower blooming. And we're just going to keep rewinding it to that that flower blooming like like fireworks that was our life. And we're just gonna wanna watch it over and over and over again. So um, I'm interested in celebrating now. I don't wanna wait till the end till we do the life review. I'm really interested in celebrating everything that has come before, even the painful stuff and realize what a blessing, what a blessing. I'm gonna celebrate it now. And that's what you're talking about there, Leslie. So cool, thank you. Anybody have one last share? They yeah. That is so cool. I'm a visual person too, so that is so cool. So like, okay, so from this point or what my life was, I can still, I'm still contributing. I'm still feeding that um, bud or the yeah. plant that's going to go. It's like, so that's what I'm doing. So everything, like Leslie, everything, every experience, um, I choose how to respond. And that makes that, that's going to make that flower, whatever. That it's like, oh my gosh. Thank you, everybody, for putting yeah. that all together. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, Thank you. It's all about the flowers today. You know, and uh, Jennifer has said, and I'm sure she quoted it from somebody else too, about how it, everything is already encoded in us. Just like uh, a, a, the seed of a rose bush, it can only grow a rose. It can't grow a weed or a tree, it can only grow a rose. So we are already that Christ light. We are already that. We are already that most magnificent, beautiful thing that we imagine um, the best of us is, or the best of uh, a friend or teacher is. We're already that. So we're just going to come to the realization of it. Carla, one last thing, and then we'll close. Okay, I was just going to say, we're doing it, ladies, we're people, we're guys. I guess the guy here that we're letting go of the crucifixion and we're resurrecting the truth that we are. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Yep, we're doing it. Thanks, Carla. So for next week, um, we're going to do, uh, we're going to stay in chapter 22, section two, which Saskia already read. So <laughs> maybe she can start us off next week. Um, your brother's sinlessness, chapter 22, section two. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read from, Ted, do you have your chart too? Uh-huh. <laughs> Were you going to share a song? If you would like, that would be cool. We'll use that as the close instead of my Pathways of Light. Well, I don't know if that's... Uh, let me take this microphone here. We we'll decided this could be better than your plan closing. I just hope you can hear it. Can you, I, can you hear me now? All right. I'm not hearing you, so I don't know why, but I'm not muted. So. I muted myself so we don't get. Oh, feedback. there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and this is this is the song I mentioned last week that uh, from the last paragraph of the introduction, where uh, the line that so close to heaven I am that uh, you know I can't return to the land, can't really return to the earth. So I, I built that into the bridge. I had written this song years ago, um, but it has to do with, you know, sometimes it's hard to 
know where to stand and that's just what, why I wrote this. I hope the sound comes out all right. This is just an old computer. If I knew where to stand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heir to the kingdom Child to the eternal life Granted to me Formed in your image in this sinful land, prize of a savior, product of man, oh heaven help me, for oh, you know who I am, you're my maker, I'm lost in this land, oh heaven help me. In your divine plan, wouldn't it be helpful if I knew where to stand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For you are all wisdom, knowledge your son grace through the spirit thy will is done follow i will but i am blind please give sight to a simple man so heaven help me for oh, you know who I am, you're my maker. I'm lost in this land, oh heaven help me. In your divine plan, wouldn't it be helpful if I knew where to stand? So close to heaven I am I'll not return to the land of man So heaven help me For you know who I am You're my maker I'm lost in this land So heaven help me in your divine plan, wouldn't it be helpful if I knew where to stand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> you heard it first. <laughs> oh man, that was awesome, Ted. Oh, that was so just beautiful. so beautiful. Oh, I'm in tears. <laughs> Me too, I got goosebumps, man. Anytime you want to usurp my closing, I'm happy to give you the floor. <laughs> it's good to be thank here. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much, everybody. See you next week. Much love. Thank you, Ted. Thank, thank, thank you, everyone. You. Thank you, Ted. Thank you all. Thank you, Ted. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Oh.